I'm Nick Reese, so welcome back to Politics HQ. Now it's time for my big idea. This is uh, something I am very excited about. It's a segment where a guest gets to present a new policy idea for a better Australia. Uh, for a better Australia. Then our panellists, our team of experts, will kick around the idea, tear it apart and come up with their verdict. Uh, and the panel will be asked to reach their verdict. And then, most importantly, you get to have your say at home. Just head to the Sky News Australia account on Twitter and cast your vote on the online poll. Or to join the conversation, just go to the hashtag politicshq. Uh, our, our, our picture this week is none other than the Director of Policy at the Institute of Public Affairs, Simon Brini. Are you with us, Simon? Yes, I am, Nick. Great to be with you and congratulations on a great new show. Thank you very much, Simon. Now, you've got a two-for-one deal when it comes to cutting red tape in this country. Give us your elevator pitch. Here's your soapbox. I, I, I do indeed. Thanks very much, Nick. Look, both sides of politics recognise that red tape is a really significant problem in Australia. We saw both Bill Shorten as leader of the Labor Party and Malcolm Turnbull as leader of the Coalition this week at their National Press Club addresses talking about the problem of red tape in Australia. Red tape costs approximately $176 billion every year on our estimates. That's a really significant break on economic growth. It means that entrepreneurialism is difficult and, of course, it harms our international competitiveness. So how do we fix this problem? It becomes intractable when governments find it very difficult. The rubber hits the road and they say, well, what are we actually going to get rid of? Um, how do you overcome this problem? I think what you've got to do is you've got to put a mechanism in place that's going to encourage red tape to be cut over time. How do you do that? Well, I think you've got to put in place what I would call a one-in, two-out rule. So Trump this week over in the United States has said exactly this. If, as a regulator, you want to put a regulation in place, that's fine. You can go ahead and do that, but you've got to get rid of two existing regulations. So I think this is a great tool to make sure that red tape is in fact cut over the long term. And rather than having hundreds and hundreds of new agencies or hundreds of new regulations over time adding to the burden of red tape, the cost of red tape over time, you in fact cut down on the burden of red tape over time, leading to a massive boom in economic growth. Mm. Thanks, uh, Simon. So, uh, I mean, we all, you know, don't want to have our lives overrun by red tape, but isn't the critical question the quality of regulation? Uh, why is the volume uh, such a focus in your policy rather than quality regulation? Well, in fact, I think what this would lead to is more quality regulation. Um, rather than having no limits on the number of pages that can be passed, the number of regulations that businesses have to deal with in putting together a business plan, in actually implementing that business plan and in making profits and employing people, um, you'd put in place a mechanism, you'd put in place a tool that would mean that you cut down on that level of red tape. So um, rather than having pages and pages of documentation that businesses have to adhere to, abide by, um, you'd get to a point where that regulation was rationalised in a way that I think would be uh, a significant improvement for the regulatory system in Australia. So in practical terms, who gets to decide which two regulations get cut? Is it the same minister who's bringing in the new regulation? Well, look, I'll leave that up to the panel to talk about, but I think the most appropriate way to put this into place would be to say if an agency wants to put a new regulation into place, then it has to be the one to decide from within the existing mountain of regulations that they're overseeing which two regulations they get rid of. So those are the ones that have to deal with both putting the new regulation in place and the administration of the old regulations. Um, they're in a place to decide whether or not they're appropriate. They can decide uh, where there are unnecessary regulations and they're in a position to be able to talk to businesses and to individuals that are affected by red tape. So um, under my model, I think the agency that's trying to put a new regulation in place, the minister that's trying to put a new regulation in place, should be the one that's responsible from within their, their own portfolio, getting rid of the two regulations. Mm. Thanks, Simon. Now, we're joined in the studio tonight by uh, two experts. Uh, the first is uh, Rita Panahi, who's a columnist uh, with The Herald Sun and uh, a favourite uh, of ours here at Sky News. And she's joined by Josh Bornstein, who is... Uh, in my view, Australia's leading industrial relations lawyer, but he's also a director of the progressive think tank, the Australia Institute. 
Thank you for be, uh, joining us here tonight, guys. Thank you. Uh, I might turn to you, Rita. What do you make of this? Look, I've got to say I like it. I've never run a small business, but when I do speak to people who do run their own businesses, whether they're small or larger enterprises, they constantly talk about their frustrations with red tape bureaucracy and all the things that hamper their efforts to grow their business. And, you know, that whole idea to me was reminiscent of uh, Kerry Packer. He appeared at the Senate Estimates Committee, I think it was, um, years ago. You can see the video on YouTube and it's quite a famous little clip of him just, you know, talking about why it he goes to efforts to reduce his tax. Why would he want to pay any more tax? But if you watch the full video, one of the things he talks about is these new laws. And every time someone passes a new law, a new regulation, you're taking someone's rights away. And if you're passing a new law, his suggestion was take one away. And this is going one step further, I guess. You pass one new law, you take two, two away. away. Um, it's simplistic on some terms because it's just a numerical thing. Um, but I like the idea of not just adding to regulation by, you know, each new law, each new regulation, nothing ever gets taken off. So it just complicates running a business further. So I think the, the concept is right, the uh, idea is right, but uh, whether anybody in Australia is bold enough to put it in practice is another thing. Well, this is the thing, Rita, isn't it? Every government promises to re uh, cut red tape and every government without fail adds to the volume of red tape in our lives. Now, Donald Trump's promised a bonfire of red tape and regulation in America. Let's see if he makes good on that promise. But Josh Bornstein, what do you make of uh, this two-for-one cut red tape deal? Look, I, I might start by asking two or three pertinent questions of, of Simon to test his idea a bit about... Uh, cutting red tape and regulation, that the two or three questions are, Simon, when you go and get uh, perhaps a, a margarita pizza at your, fa your favourite Italian restaurant, do you like it to come with a, a little sprinkling of poo? So that's my first question. The second one is, do you agree that trade unions should be much more easily able to take strike action without all of the ballots and restrictions <laughs> that currently occur under the Fair Work Act? And the third one is, when you're perhaps taking an interstate uh, trip to Sydney and the plane starts to its descent, do you, are you the sort of guy who thinks, gee, I wish all the air traffic controllers just put their headset down and uh, left, left their jobs and uh, let everyone uh, land without any um, safety uh, regulation in place? There's, there's uh, three questions which clearly raise the question, Simon, do you favour that sort of regulation? Food industry regulation, food hygiene regulation, air traffic control regulation, regulation of industrial relations. Well, I've never heard anyone defend $176 billion impost on the Australian economy or uh, the existence of red tape, but uh, it's great that you've got a, uh, a panellist on the program tonight, Nick, that's willing to go there. Um, look, I mean, you know, frankly, they're absurd examples. I don't know how successful you think a pizza shop would be uh, over the long term if it, uh, if it had species in its pizza or how successful uh, uh, unsafe airlines are, um, the, reality, the, 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 reality, the reality of course is that as consumers you make decisions every day about uh, the kind of airline you want to travel on, uh, the kind of pizza you want to buy and uh, frankly I think uh, most of those issues are resolved by people making sensible decisions. I mean if you, you think that people are as deeply uh, un uh, lacking in rational skills or, uh, or decision making uh, as, as all of that, um, I think uh, you, you, you're living, you, you perceive yourself to be living in a community of, uh, of dullards and idiots and I don't think we are. So um, I actually think consumers are pretty intelligent and they'll make decisions about the kind of things that they want to consume. Uh, they, they do that in fact on a very, very complex level. I mean there are any number of decisions you make every day about the technology you consume, the media you consume. If you're watching Sky News at the moment, you're making a terrific decision about that. Um, so, you know, I, let, let, let's trust consumers. But, you know, to, to, to put all of those, uh, frankly, absurd examples to one side and focus, for instance, on the reporting requirements that are in place for businesses uh, when it comes to, for instance, workplace gender equality. You know, if you've got more than 50 employees, you've got to make a report every year to the Workplace Gender and Equality Agency. Um, nothing happens. You've just got to report the number of men and women working for you um, to a bureaucrat that frankly has never run a business um, and has no interest in making sure that your business is successful so that you can continue to hire men and women 
uh, to work for you. So, um, you know, there, there's any number of regulations that are in place that are clearly absurd. Um, I think there's a lot of low-hanging fruit, and I think that this kind of rule would encourage governments to actually tackle red tape rather than adding to that giant pile every single year. Now, don't forget, uh, viewers, that uh, you can not only follow this uh, debate at home, but you can actually vote on it at home as well. Uh, if you uh, want to cast your vote, go to the uh, Sky News Twitter account and there's a question there. Uh, do you support a plan to require the Australian government to cut two regulations every time they introduce a new regulation? You can either vote yes, no, or more work needed. If you think there's something to it, but more work needed, you can vote for that third option. But look, Simon, I know when I go down to the park at the end of my street, I've noticed lately there's kids down there flying drones around. Now, I hadn't even heard of drones two years ago. Now that my local park is full of them, and quite frankly, I hope there's a regulation that comes along soon, tells those kids they can't fly the drones in my park. But I hope they don't have to cut two regulations to stop the drones. Um, you know, if they cut a regulation saying dogs uh, can now poop in the park, I wouldn't be very happy about that. Uh, if they cut a regulation that said that you, it's now fine to litter in the park, I wouldn't be happy about that either. So, you know, it's all very well to say we need to keep cutting red tape, and I'm all for that as well, but this idea that you have to cut two regulations for every new one, I could see that leading to some pretty awful outcomes for society. Well, I mean, the reality, of course, is that if you don't have a, an incentive in place like this, you're not going to cut red tape. So, um, as I've said, both Bill Shorten and Malcolm Turnbull have said that this is a project that they think is worthy of, uh, of pursuing. Um, if you don't think that cutting red tape is a project worthy of pursuing, then I, I completely agree with you. A, a rule like this makes absolutely no sense. If you think that adding to the cost uh, that Australians have to bear, that consumers have to bear every time they... Uh, consume something in Australia, then that's fine. Uh, but frankly, if you do think that red tape should be cut, and I very strongly believe that red tape should be cut in Australia, um, then a rule like this is a very sensible move down the right path. Um, frankly, too, I mean, I have to say, uh, a one-in, two-out rule is, is pretty, uh, pretty minor. Uh, you know, in some places around the world, they'd look at a one-in, five-out rule. Uh, one, one in ten out rule. Um, I think that what Trump's put in place over in the United States is actually incredibly moderate and for us to follow down that same path I think would be a very reasonable thing to do. Mm. Uh, Rita and Josh, I'm keen to hear from you about your view on the politics of this. We've talked a bit about it as a policy and its practicalities, uh, but what about the politics of this? It's obviously worked for Donald Trump, but would it work here in Australia? Or maybe it hasn't worked for Donald Trump, but keen on your thoughts. Um, I think it would work beautifully in Australia as far as telling, uh, communicating that message to the electorate. I think it's a message that the electorate would be receptive to. Um, but on the other side, you could run some very uh, effective scare campaigns. But I think the real problem is that we don't have that many people in Parliament who have run a business, successfully or otherwise. And, uh, and the motivation to actually do something in this area, to the actual knowledge of how much this hampers business isn't there. When I mean, you look at the background of most of the politicians from both sides, and there's not too many there who've, who've created business, who've created jobs, who've created wealth out of nothing. Um, and I think that's part of the problem. Perhaps, you know, that we need to look at pre-selecting some people who've actually been successful uh, on their own before they go in and represent us in Parliament. So certainly if you pair a plan to cut red tape with bashing pollies over not owning business sense, it's a, it's a cliche, but it's proven effective. Uh, I can see where you're going with it. Uh, Josh, your thoughts? Well, at this point, I'd better put my hand up and say that I'm a successful entrepreneur that <laughs> uh, runs a very successful company. And, uh, for Parliament. example, well, I'll, I'll also <laughs> just uh, not alarm anybody and rule that out straight away. I'm not moving anywhere. <laughs> I'm enjoying myself too much. Um, but we, we uh, somehow cope with this terrible avalanche of suffocating red tape and continue to grow and continue to prosper. And in fact, it the Australian helps that economy. You're a, you're, a, you're, you're a lawyer, so it's your area. It's, a hard you know, it's not like you're being crippled it by getting It is a successful legal... small no. business. In fact, grows medium. It's a mid sized business these days. We've got 1,100 employees. So it's, a, it's quite, a, it's quite a, a decent sized <laughs> business. But we're not alone. Don't. Uh, let's decontextualise this. Australia has had a quarter of a century consecutive economic growth. It's unlike virtually any other developed economy 
its record is unlike any developed economy in the world. So we're and okay. Okay. we've somehow managed to do that without being suffocated yeah. by this terrible red tape which we imagine is causing <laughs> all sorts of problems in business. We've okay guys, we've got to get national debt. We do have to we'll, 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 that's a debate for another week guys. We do have to go to a break, but before we do, I need your verdict. Yes, no or more work needed, Rita? Oh, look, I'm going to go bold. I'm going to go yes. Okay, I Josh. I want more work needed as well, but yes. You're voting yes, it's Josh. A, what are you voting? Da, it's a dud idea, and I'll personally shoot it down. It's just a shocker. <laughs> there you go. Yes, no on the panel. Simon, thanks so much for ha coming on and jumping on your soapbox and giving it your best. Now, don't forget, people uh, at home, you can vote on this. Go to the Sky News Twitter account and vote now. And at the end of the program, we'll come back and show you what the results are. But back after the break, we're going to have the panel. Plenty more sizzle as we work through the issues of the week. Don't go away.